This meeting is being recorded. Um, so we'll do attendance first. I kind of you know we need your help, Carolyn. But we'll do attendance first. Um, so Sarah P. Sarah P's here. Okay, Stephen Brown. Here. Bronwyn Nelson. Here. Megan James. Here. Yeah. Carolyn Coffey. Here. Elaine. Um, <laughs> here. Alex Vizzeri. Here. And Brooke Joel. Here. Um, great. And did you guys have a chance to look at the minutes? Which I now have a new appreciation for Gremlin. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, this is a little tricky. You did a great job. Okay. Motion to approve both the September and the October yeah. minutes. Okay. Second. Second to approve. Mm -hmm. Third. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Approved. And then we'll go to the director's report. Great. Thank you. We're wrapping up a lot of projects, so it's been a pretty exciting month. We've talked about kind of things over and over again, like the welcome bags and passports and website and things like that, and all of those launched this month, so it's really exciting. Um, we also have some great programming, um, especially coming out of the adult department, as Jen just started with us, and now that she has her footing, she's been able to do some great programs. So uh, one that I want to highlight is really creative is a takeaway tea program. So it works a lot like our... Um, kids craft programs where you can come and take the craft and go. And so every month it's gonna be a different type of tea and you'll be able to read the history and the origins of the tea while you enjoy it at home. We're focusing a little bit on passive programs because we're finding that people, you know, don't have the time to come to um, programs at the library or um, have other things going on. Um, so this is a way to engage our patrons without, you know, taking any time out of their, or specific time out of their day. Uh, uh, decide. Question. Yeah. Is that a documented observation, or is that just educated guess based on your experience? Uh, it's pretty well documented. We're just since COVID, we're seeing more and more that people are uh, more appreciative of programs that they can join in on their own time. So a lot of times, oh. like if we record a, um, an author talk or a program, yeah. um, it gets uploaded to YouTube, and we're seeing we get way more hits through oh, people watching it on YouTube after the fact than we did attendance during the program. Um, do we have a chance of encouraging discussion about those programs where you can, can you comment on if you download it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I guess you could, we don't see a lot of that. Okay. Because you have to have an account with YouTube, you have to be signed in. A lot of people have that, but um, we haven't seen a lot of comments under our, our programs. Okay. Um, you can chat during the program. You can use the chat box. You can engage through Zoom and things like that. But after the fact, it's, it's not as much. Okay. I, there was an article on the front page of the Wall Street Journal today about silent book groups oh. and how all these people, all these places are mm. doing like an hour of quiet reading time and how many people want to do that rather than feeling they can just read what they want to read. And, you know, it doesn't, it's, there's no rush to finish a book. You don't have to discuss the book. Yeah, they just go and they're with people who like books and they read and they can have a little social time before and a little social time after. Oh, that's, a, that's kind of a cool idea. Mm -hmm. so yeah, just, share. just the unstructured, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I think it's becoming pretty popular. Um, <laughs> so we'll uh, always do a little bit of both, of course, you know, I, some people prefer to come in person and like to engage and, uh, but we're just seeing a lot of people wanting an al alternative. So, um, so that program is going along with our Boston Tea Party program. That is an in-person program that's happening on the 16th. Um, it's a historical look uh, 250 years later. So the tea that we're sampling is the tea that was thrown overboard during the tea party, and then we have a, a program too. So how does that work? You just walk in on a certain day? Yeah. Get the tea. Yeah, you'll get the tea, and it's until supplies last, and then... You know, we'll do another one next month with a, a theme as well. My wife had uh, an event 
with her college where they sent out a tea and then they had uh, an online discussion. Zoom, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we were thinking about doing that with flip too. Um, starting to meet them on Zoom because then people can have their beverage of choice. They can yeah. be on Zoom. You know, there's no liability for us. And, you know, kids could be asleep. You don't need a babysitter. Or... I see beverage was a euphemism. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that choice is. Whatever that choice is. <laughs> so we don't have any more of those orange mugs from Friends of the Library. Oh, we do. So oh, maybe yeah. like. Just like you pick a raffle and somebody gets to go home with one. Yeah, with their yeah. Tea bag. idea. Yeah, just get rid of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the friends are actually doing a raffle that is really fantastic that I want to share with you after my report during the friends time. Um, do you, just as a trivia question, does anybody know how many cups of tea and or coffee are consumed daily? In the globe, in the world. I know the answer to this is why I'm going to share this with you. Okay, no. Thank you so much. <laughs> Five billion cups of coffee and or tea are consumed every day. That's five-eighths of the world's population. Uh, well, it's not because uh, we're the assumption that I'm making is that they're having three to four cups of coffee, three or four cups per day. Oh. So there's probably, it's over one billion people are having a hot beverage of coffee or tea on a daily basis. I'm working on it. Well, that's a great question. That's actually part of the problem with this with this company is that they actually make mugs, uh, temperature controlled mugs, and, and it, 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 is it Ember? It is Ember, yeah. Oh, love so, that program. So they the thing about it is that in Italy they consume coffee very differently than they do in Seattle, you know, and so there's a whole global thing that we're working on, but. Sorry, I Are you going to get some? Yeah. Why don't you get some free cups yeah, yeah. from Ember? Like, Ember, I know. for us. And then, oh, uh, <laughs> I, I'll, 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 I'll do my job. I'm, I'm going out there to meet them this week, so maybe I get some swag. Yeah. Um, passport program. I'm going to let Brian talk a little bit more about that. Put you on the spot quickly. Um, but that launched um, on Halloween, along with our new website. Um, and we are, uh, we're doing a very soft launch and we're working in teams to begin with so that we're all feeling comfortable. Um, and Brahman had her first appointment today, with, or yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. I heard them come in and yeah. ask for you. Yeah. 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 Tell us about well, it. So, you know, we thought, oh, we'll just ease into this slowly, you know, we'll take our time. The first appointment is a family with two young children who have already booked their trip to Costa Rica for Christmas. So it has to be, they have to expedite everything. <laughs> they need it immediately. Yeah. They're, oh, they're, it, drive by there. it turns out they're my neighbor. So I, I, I live <laughs> up the street. So I'm now I'm more pressure because I got to do it all right. Is that, you know, I'll never hear the end of it. They don't get to go to Costa Rica. They come in, they have all their stuff. And the first thing is their picture. The daughter has her glasses on I and you cannot glasses. wear glasses. So, they had just gone to UPS with the picture, so they had to run out. Their father had to take the day off because you have to have both parents. <laughs> it turned into, it was like a couple of days of back and forth, and finally, I mailed it all out. Was that yesterday? Yeah. 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 So, so worth it. It was, it was <laughs> all that for $30. <laughs> $70. <laughs> each one would be the first $70. So we have another appointment on Friday. And hopefully this one will be a lot easier. But Jen Evans is also trained, so she sat with me, which was really great to have just another person double check everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it went actually pretty smoothly. It went great. Yeah. It was just, yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It was like, what? You need it? What? <laughs> what? And then I guess the kids, you have to, they already had their passports before. These are, these, there's like eight and 10 year olds and they were already on their second passport. So, uh, but it had expired and maybe started. It was just a whole, it was a lot of learning process for everybody. But um, I think there's a lot of interest. I think it's going to be great. And, uh, yeah, we get to well done. Thirty five dollars yeah. a person. So. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a money maker. It's a money maker, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it was good. Yes, yeah. it was well done. Yeah. And where does that money go? Is it does, is it into a revolving account or? Uh, That's a great question. We were I talking about that. <laughs> we were also talking <laughs> about kind of how the um, 
we had to pay for shipping as well out of the post office. So how do we pay for that? So we're looking into um, kind of prepaying for postage and we've been using, we thought we'd start using the gift account. To put the money, put in, the money in, in the, the gift account. account. Yeah. Yeah. So with the expedited, they actually paid up front for the extra postage. It's like almost $30 to send that thing overnight. But normally we would pay for it. So we need a mechanism to put the money in and then take the money out. So we're gonna talk to Linda Cole. Yeah. So first one we we well, the postage charge is separate than the $35 that you earn. Exactly. Them, right? yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So but we so still need a different checks yeah. that have to yeah. come in with the passport. One yeah. has to go to state, one has to go to us. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Postage. We think the $35 should stay with us as well instead of going to the general fund. Right. So we're, putting uh, so we're going to put it in the gift account so that we can. Good thought. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> we don't want to give it to the town. So. All right. Because it's like it's our. Yeah. Don't, don't late fees go into the town? They or, do. Yeah. yeah. They, do. they do. So, um, but this is all. This is our our. You program. did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we're going to keep the money till someone tells us not to. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. don't spend yeah. it yet. It's good. I think it's a great service. So it's people seem pretty excited about it. Yes. And we haven't really even advertised it. We haven't really had so it's on our website, but it hasn't been on any newsletters or e-newsletters just because we didn't want a big flood while mm -hmm. we're just trying to, you know, normalize it within our operations. So yeah. Okay. Um, we have two new um, circulation substitutes. Um, they're just um, two um, ladies from surrounding libraries that are kind of on an on-call basis. So if somebody's on vacation, somebody's sick, and we need some extra help at the front desk, um, we can call these individuals. Um, so Janice O'Hearn and Kristen Fahey are faces that you might see at the desk that are. How do we pay for that? Um, that comes out of our regular personnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we have lots of money left over from um, staff change that happened in the summer. Um, it's also budgeted in a very small amount is budgeted in every year for substitutes. Um, but we have an access of them this year. Um, the staff also kind of reached a, a verdict with the town regarding their vacation time, switching from um, a dump of vacation time on July 1 to now an accrual process, which worked out to the, um, that they were actually losing vacation time from going from one year to another year. So the staff also has more vacation time this year than they would have um, normally. Um, so that is another reason why there's a need for a substitute switch to the town square. We're just working Sundays, Sundays, which has been good. And they've been pitching in on Sundays. And that is not, so all of that time is already budgeted. We don't need to, uh, nobody's taking, still being paid because they're taking that time off. So that's um, already budgeted for. I'm sorry, can we go back to the gift? I'm, so my head's really not in it today. But can we go back to the gift account? Yes. Question again? Yeah. How does that work? Gift What's account. Yeah. yeah. So we have, um, so the library has a gift account. Yes. Um, that people can give, put money in. And it's just a general gift account. There's no um, with parameters restrictions or restrictions on it. On it. And um, sometimes people do have like a memorial fund and they want us to purchase five children's books. And so they'll give us money, we put it in the gift account and then when we buy things, we charge it to that account. Mm -hmm. So that it's specific, it's it's being paid for out there. So you're creating a service. No, I'm not, this isn't suspect at all. I'm just asking a question. You're creating a service because revenue is going into this gift account and it provides a certain flexibility. So now yes. you've got money coming in and money, money coming in for a service. Yes. So if I were to have a client that wanted to donate something, to your to the library let's just say we're at a restaurant and that restaurant gave you a fifty dollar gift give you a bunch of fifty dollar gift cards give you three thousand dollars worth of or two thousand dollars worth of gift cards at fifty dollar increments and you could sell them to the public for twenty five dollars okay 
can I don't think can well, we can't the right? library can't fundraise and that would be sort of fundraising I think right I think that's, that's the hitch up that so we're providing they could give to the friends but the friends could do it the friends could do it yeah we tried them already they're not doing it so there's hmm. there's either the CLT you know which which funds larger things and the in the uh, book account and then there's the friends which fund the programming and then there's the gift account which is actually we use it to pay for all the museum passes during the year and then at the end of the year I tell the friends this is how much we spent on museum passes and they write a check and it goes back in the gift account so it's sort of a fluid revolving account, account. Yeah, it's, it's a revolving, revolving account slightly discretionary yeah exactly so it's it's nice to have because um I'm trying to help you guys raise funds without going yeah, to friends because the friends were not very well could, open to the idea. I don't idea. think we could sell gift cards, but I have another idea. Maybe we can talk offline. Okay. okay. Um, it's a service, but not a not a product. It's not like a fundraiser. Yeah. It's a no. yeah. It's a yeah. Okay. And like the state sets how much we can charge too, so it's not like yeah. we were like, oh, let's charge thirty five. Like they tell us yeah. you can get thirty five dollars. Yeah. Mm, got it. Um, our website is complete. That also launched on October 31st. Um, still tweaks here and there, but we feel pretty good about it. Um, I think it looks a lot nicer than it used to. I think it highlights a lot of the things that we do. Um, so we'll continue to tweak here and there, but I think it's uh, we're happy with it. Um, other projects, we are investigating technology for the study rooms. I think we talked about this last meeting, but um, we're looking for essentially some nicer looking monitors to go up on the walls in the study room so people can cast like I do here in a safe way. Um, we can't just link into a public internet because somebody else could cast while they were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, disrupt whatever <clears throat> meeting they have cast and things like that. So it's a little bit specific. Um, Normal has a really nice system. So we're kind of um, looking at how hmm. what they have and, and who set it up for them and that type of thing and how much it will cost. So I will report on that once I get some more information. But we're thinking, um, the two study rooms, maybe here, I think this whiteboard's become a little outdated, um, and maybe in the storage room if we decide that um, we want to start using that room as a meeting room, then that's kind of a question mark, but um, those are the locations I was thinking of. Um, library usage by time, so it's been put on hold a little bit because it is a um, change in work conditions, which needs to be negotiated with the union and their um, negotiations don't come up until next year. So it's kind of moot point right now, because even if we talked about it, there weren't really any, there aren't any real changes that we can make until it's negotiated. So, um, so that's kind of where we are with that. Hmm. Um, researching a marketing intern, which I continue to do, I mean, I'm not finding it as fruitful as I thought it was going to be. They have, it's not a marketing program, it's like a, it's a digital, digital, it's not, it's a digital graphics program, so it's not quite the marketing program I thought it was, so I don't think that this avenue is going to work out, unfortunately, but I'll continue to look to see if there's any other supports that we can get. Um, and finally, what I've added on is we desperately need a social media plan, so that's kind of my next project. Um, we uh, use social media, but we don't use it effectively. Um, so we have to figure out a way to not only use it effectively, but how does that work operationally with, with the staff and how do we you know, train everybody up and, and what's our schedule gonna look like and that kind of thing. So uh, we're starting to get that. Um, Alex had sent me a nice um, example of a, some plans um, that we can follow, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me. Bronwyn, you want to go over the financial report? I will. I will be quick. I don't. I was just looking at it earlier. I don't think there's too much that would be unusual. Um, people always ask every year about the LinkedIn Corporation. <laughs> That's what jumped out at me. <laughs> well, remind me exactly what I thought. Remind well, me why we pay them twenty five thousand dollars. No, it's uh, it's uh, LinkedIn Learning, which is on our website. Okay, which is, it's not the um, LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. And, and do um, do we have to do people use it? Yes, okay. yes. I've and used we it. Use it too. Yeah, we, we use it as well for our own training internally. Gotcha. So uh, it's it's very useful. Can I ask a question about um, potential new um, 
digital products that might be really useful in the town. And uh, are you familiar with Up to Date, which is a, a medical agglomerator in everyday language? Um, so, <laughs> except for agglomerator. So let's imagine you have your appointment with your healthcare provider, yeah. and he or she says you've got like a you oh, and you say, God. "Oh, I don't know anything about that." Well, you open up to doist. I mean, to, uh, up to date, and what you find in everyday plain language is what it is, what the statistics are, um, what the new research is. Um, I've had to use it when my brother has a rare disease and it's fabulous. And it's good enough that when you go in and sit down with the doctors that you can actually ask some useful probing questions. And- uh, Is there a service being involved with this? Yes. There is. Yeah. I was gonna say, the doctors love those kind of programs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not as so much Not as they like when you Google everything. Well, there was an article in the New England, New England Journal of Medicine saying that they don't want to provide any test results mm -hmm. to patients because it generates all sorts of questions yes. that consume. But uh, we're talking about putting in an artificial intelligence program that will identify the most commonly asked questions and then put that in so that you can dial in and say, okay, I need information about this. And then you click on that and you click on this and you get all your answers. And then they say, do you have anything that hasn't been covered? You say yes. And then you get to a, to a nurse or someone who now is, has more free time and can answer it. So it seems like um, a well-informed patient gets better care <coughs> and the health system that's under a lot of strain right now does better. So how did you get on? Um, onto this. I mean, did, did you learn about it or? No, you said you use it. Oh, brother, our daughter is a physician. Oh, okay. So you're thinking the library might look into whether a subscription could be available. Exactly. For exactly. Users. I can look at that. Looking at it right now, actually, there's an option to purchase it for groups. So I'll look into it. Thanks. Yeah. So other than that, just the uh, the music circus charges are all related to the pavilion project. Carolyn spent some money for the sign and the um, the postcards, I think. The mailing, yeah, yeah, the mailing. Um, all of that is all being reimbursed to everyone who spent the money. So other than that, I think um, and we bought Sharon a new battery pack for her wireless microphone, which gets a lot of work. So uh, that's everything. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer specific things. Motion to approve the bill. So Second. moved. Second. Aye. 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 Yes, you probably have to go around. Well, we did have oh, anybody to do that on yeah. Anybody opposed? Uh, yeah. Sure, anyone opposed? No. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't think we need to do it by attendance when we're all in the room. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> okay, so um, chair's report. So I had asked um, Catherine if she had anything, but she said uh, she didn't. Nothing that couldn't be covered by um, things that were in the CLT report and the front. Although, I don't have any information from Catherine. I can so, talk about the front. Okay, and I can talk CLT. about the CLT. Okay, so Catherine, I'm going to talk about me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's real, folks. We put, we got our design specs. They are posted. We are getting. Uh, we have a bid date. Uh, bids due next Wednesday. Uh, Monday. There's going to be a walk around for anybody who's interested in the project to look at the space and, and kind of talk about logistics and that sort of thing. We had a um, quick phone call this morning with the owner's project manager, and then a guy named Mark Cameron, who some of you might know, who was on the town hall rebuilding committee with me um, and works in construction. He's offered to help us, you know, with the oversight of the construction. Um, and uh, 
we had a quick call and I confirmed um, something with them about the process that um, it is different from what we did with Town Hall and have done with other projects. Um, anybody can bid on it. It doesn't have to be somebody on the state list, but local people have to pay prevailing wage. So if you guys have, um, you know, Masons, you know, if you have relationships with any of these kinds of contractors, um, you know, direct them mm -hmm. to the project if they're interested in looking at it. <clears throat> uh, and then the way it works is um, they have to submit their bids and we have to take the lowest price. Um, that's how it works with the state, which, so I didn't realize that it's a, it's a chapter 30 filing, mm -hmm. which, uh, so that's, that was new to me. So that was, <laughs> so I just shared that with you guys. Um, what about so, insurance coverage and things like that? that it, it, the, it all has to, yeah, we have the owner's project manager has to be, it has to be the lowest bid that meets all the criteria. Ah, okay, that was yeah, that meets all my the concern. criteria. Because I might bid low. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, we talked about logistics and, you know, whether, and we will ask them on Monday, but whether it makes sense to start the project this fall and finish it in the spring, or whether it makes more sense to just do it all in one fell swoop. We imagine it's better to do it all in one fell swoop because if they start moving land around and then we have a wet winter, we could end up with dirt washing in the mm -hmm. parking lot. It could be, you know, a pain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the time frame is rather tight. They depending on whether we do the brick facing walls or the cement block walls, um, it could take you know 60 to 90 days. If, if the ground is frozen for a long time, we need to make sure they're done before rec camp starts. So it's a tight window. So those are the kinds of things that we're gonna be talking with them. Um, but they're gonna need to uh, you know, match the brick and order the bricks and or order the- um, Did we get the a price on the cement? No, that's what we're gonna get all. Okay. Yes, we are gonna get it. Mm -hmm. That's a, the alternate where they're pricing both out for us. Um, and um, so they they will likely need to um, stage, think like the, the bricks might come in before they're ready to start, you know, applying them and everything. So we need to talk about where they're gonna be stored and all of that sort of thing and erosion control. So the, it's real. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's happening. Thank you for all your work. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and um, fundraising wise, we're um, we are at right at about four hundred thousand dollars, and um, we think we, we need more because that didn't include furniture and it doesn't mm -hmm. include enough for the plants. And yeah, you know, we'll see how it relates to what they think it'll cost to build everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we we continue that money's kind of trickling in from the um, postcard effort mm -hmm. and um, the thermometer is going to go out uh, on the corner um, hopefully in the next week or so to try and how many people roughly uh, have are involved in contributing the 400,000 I don't know the answer to that question not that many yeah not okay a couple of does the thermometer have a QR code on the board somewhere when no. people are walking by? That's no. a great idea. Great we, you know, we, we designed it. We thought about that, mm -hmm. but we designed it really for cars. Uh, oh, and we were going to put the yeah. QR code, and then we thought that keeping it simple mm -hmm. um, and eye-catching. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully people will go to the website, and there's a QR code on the website. Right. So that poster above it that's kind of leaning on the... Yeah. That doesn't have the QR code. That has the QR code, and actually, we have a stack of the postcards in front yeah. of the yeah. thermometer as well. Mm -hmm. Inside. That's like, when it goes outside. outside. Yeah. 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 We just imagine that it's going to be viewed by drivers mm -hmm. and passengers right. far more than pedestrians. Yeah. And the furniture, did you have a furniture meeting? I think there was... We had a furniture meeting. We looked, We looked. I was not able to attend. We looked at a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can speak to it. Yeah, so um, a group of us met and we just kind of went through a few. I have a furniture fellow that I've worked with over the years for different library projects. So we sent along some different options. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of sat and had a very preliminary 
noodle over what our spaces we would want the spaces to look like and what kind of vibe the furniture we were thinking it should match the rest of the building and what's the look of the building that kind of thing so um, i sent some of our ideas over to the furniture people and they are starting to put something together although they still keep asking for a cad drawing so I'll see if maybe I can talk to Chris about that. Um, the, the thing that I sent you from Chris, yeah. I did finally hear from him back. Those, the grid that he drew on it, yeah. each one is five by five. Yeah. So they could they could recreate that in CAD pretty easily. It's just a thing. Yeah. And now they have, that would have the measurements in it. Yeah. Just it would make sense that he has it. So. I, I asked him specifically, and he no. said no. So. <laughs> Okay, um, well, so that's where we are. They're starting to stage some of the furniture into that. I gave them the PDF. So. And I'm, I'll, I'm going to reach out to Nora, too, because she may have suggestions. And okay. Stuff. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, it was just like an informal kind of fun. <coughs> yeah. Um, Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Yeah. Yep. So that's first, it. first steps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Friends report from Friends report. Um, so the friends met last week, um, really well. Everything went really well. So Melissa, she hasn't been, I don't think, formally voted in yet, but she's joined the friends, and she has helped to design a new um, ornament that they're doing. Um, less expensive than the past ornament. It's a little bit more wallet friendly. I think they're going to sell between twenty and twenty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it's a. They're working with um, the new um, store down the street. Darling Designs, mm -hmm. uh, the woman who owns that. So it's a nice seashell <laughs> and it has the Friends logo on the front and I think the coordinates of um, the library on the back. Um, and they're just selling it for fairly short money and um, I think they're getting it for maybe $12 a piece and they're going to sell it for $22 or so. Um, so that's been great. It's designed. It looks beautiful. It's a nice gold edge. Mm -hmm. The comment too is that it could go on a, a tree, it could be an ornament, but it really could just sit on a window all year round as well. It's not, it doesn't scream holidays either. So it's something that you could just have in your home. And when would that be ready? Um, it so is almost mid November. Yeah. So they ordered last week. Um, and so they should be in, in the next week or two. Um, they're planning on selling them at the stroll. They have a booth at the stroll that they're going to sell it at. Um, and it, again, I think it's something that we can sell year round. It's a nice hostess gift and it doesn't scream like this is a holiday mm -hmm. ornament. It's you know something that you could give somebody all year round. So um, so they're working on that. They also are doing two raffle baskets of Cohasset experiences, one for adults and one for children. And um, let me just, I'm just going to look this up quick. So, um, so Meg Wheeler is heading this up. Um, and so she has an adult basket. It's going to have one of the ornaments, um, one of the mugs from the friends. Um, they, they are working on, um, they just designed some bookmarks that they're going to be giving out. Um, the first experience for adults that we definitely have lined up is name a drink on the spring menu at Seabird. Um, mm. So um, you could uh, be named after one of the drinks at Seabird for a month or so. Um, learn to row. It's that would work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee's coffee. Coffee's coffee. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Sorry. No, <laughs> um, we're working on kind of an, an evening, um, like host your book group at the after hours of the library as a, one of the things. She's reached out to Barrel and Vine a few other places as well. Are we um, allowed to have wine here now? No, no, but we still need a bartender. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So the wine can be donated, but it, there would need to be a bartender. Okay. Um, so, um, what's involved in being a certified bartender? Um, it's really about the carrying the insurance. I see. The town's not insured to um, give out beverages, so we have to essentially have somebody who has the insurance who's who is giving out the beverages. Um, That's um, you know, the guy I see him, Seabird Connor. That's what Connor is. Connor, uh -huh. yeah, he's a certified bartender. And everybody knows him. He's like a town. Oh. I do know Connor, but yeah, Connor, I'm not sure if he's insured for the business to do that. He's been hired as a bartender. I've seen him at party. I mean, that's because of New York. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't make him official. No, that can be because of New York umbrella insurance or home homeowner's insurance. So I'm going to ask those. It's nice to have oh, okay. people from town. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 
So, yeah. the, so the one we've used was Michelle for the for the event that we did here in the library. Oh, okay. the and it, they, it's four hundred dollars or something like that for the evening plus mm -hmm. gratuity. Or actually, mm -hmm. that includes gratuity. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's it's it's about that number, I think. Um, and for the children's basket, some of the things, so all the friends things again, um, um, possibly raffling off a librarian for the day with Sharon Moody in the children's room, um, a private tour of the police and fire station, um, a tour of the harbor with the harbor master, um, and we've reached out to Buttonwood Books as well to see if sure. there's something they might be interested in, um, I don't know, some type of experience at, at Buttonwoods. Um, so I, I like the theme of this. I think it's just something that's different. It's interesting. Um, you're not kind of getting a thing, but you get to kind of do all these fun things around Cohasset. So um, we thank Meg Wheeler for picking this up and, and the friends supporting her. So that they'll be raffle baskets starting on uh, November 25th. And it's going to go for just about a, a little, little less than a month um, and end on December 22nd. Um, and the library staff is going to be giving out um, raffle tickets as people purchase them. So <laughs> and that's it from the front. So, so I have a question. Uh, so I understand the CLT and I understand the friends and I obviously understand our, our with this kind of questions come up before, but I'm, I'm just trying to get my arms around the brand and who's in charge of the brand mm -hmm. across the three entities, right? The CLT, the friends, and the library. Mm -hmm. Arguably, the one person that's in touch with all three of those is you. Yes. So as a leader of that, how much influence do you have over brand messages? Um, I think it's like a lot. I mean, the friends generally don't move. I mean, I don't think the friends have ever moved forward with something that I've said that we don't want to do. So I think we have a nice relationship in that sense that I haven't felt like they've pushed on to something that I didn't think was in line with the brand or, you know, kind of how we do things. Um, I don't tell them what to do. I'll give guidance. I work with them and what their, whatever their comfort zone is. We push that comfort zone here and there. But yeah, I don't, I mean, I think our, my relationship with the friends, I believe is, is, very good and we work we have we work all together and so you know, let's just so let, i'll go specific now that's another bit under the understand part of it so mm -hmm. i read the letter that came out this past weekend i got this past weekend and with the friends the friends the friends asked, the, the friends asked letter that. which i th well I won't, I won't talk about my, my own personal thought but we, there is a process that we created a strategic plan with that actually had brand elements within it. Mm -hmm. The top of that, top of that was the idea of community building and being a community center and mm -hmm. driving towards that goal. Mm -hmm. I wrote a draft of the letter that clearly didn't get adopted that utilized that goal in mind. Mm -hmm. I had a due north that I created months ago, and that's what I used to create communication. The letter lacked, in my opinion, lacked passion and it lacked purpose, brand passion and brand purpose. So clearly the purpose of it was to raise money and I could tell by the little thing at the bottom that I'm supposed to give money to it, but the message to me was off the mark. So I just don't know how that happens. Well, so we have a group that have historically written the same letter for many, many years. And while I think you feel that there was a very low impact with your attendance at that meeting, they did take a, some of your language, and while that feels like a baby step, I think, to somebody in the corporate world, in the public sector, that is a very large step. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sorry that they didn't take your letter, um, but I think that... Okay. And again, this is, so, so just to be clear, I'm thinking about this strategically from a, so there's two, there's two elements, right? So mm -hmm. as a human and an individual that has to help out, uh, I was hurt in the fact that she didn't have the courtesy to pick up the phone and call me and have a discussion with me or even to get on the phone and just say thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So as an individual, I have like I'm 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 offended by it. But more as a more importantly, and as a as a strategist and a storyteller, a professional communicator, it seems off brand. Yeah. And so if everyone in this room has agreed that there is a brand vision, yeah, then that brand vision should be pushed through regardless of what's historically has happened within the in the in the public or you know sector. It's let's move the ball up the field. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's um, it's angering to me mm-hmm. that like an organization is supposed to sit here and support the vision of this library, your specific vision, because that everything we put on that thing was meant to support your vision. Yeah. That we're not acting on it. So I I agree with you in the sense that the the letter is obsolete i don't think it completely misses the mark you know they talk about the programming they talk about is it the new direction that we want to move in not all together but we we have to respect them as a group and what they've done historically we can't just go in and say this is what you're doing it's not a corporate world and they are a separate 501c3 so there is a strategy of guidance and providing support that you slowly move a group like that forward into a place that we are all comfortable. But I'm certainly not in a position to go into the friends group and say, this is the letter, this is what we're using, and you know, this is what it is. That's that's not my role in the friends group. My my role is to provide guidance and to be a support to them. And I do think that we are moving. I realize it's not as fast as you might be used, used to, but you know. This is, we're Mem- doing the best we can to make everybody feel like they are valued and what they've done in the past is valued. May I ask sort of a very broad general question? If you were to sit down individually with the friends, would they have any disagreement with the strategic strategic plan that we put together? No, no, I, I don't, I just don't. So think- I just, this is for, for you. They. They don't have an argument with what you put together. They just don't think the way you think and the way that hopefully we all would think eventually. Yeah, it's just when I read a letter, right? Like and it's asking for money, right? As we're leading into the holidays. I recognize all the words on that page, but they weren't telling a story. Uh-huh. And you have an opportunity to tell a story oh, yeah. and tell a direction and to get and to have passion and to use cadence. The most important, I think the, lo- the worst part about it is that they were sentences that were the, 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 like it just stopped like it wasn't like tell the story like and and i try and, and ultimately you know i was hitting the community message consistently at the cadence and they just chose to eliminate the community message entirely and so that to me is a huge like strategically so, that's a miss so do you think they they don't accept the, the community message no, I don't. I don't think that's true at all. I think they probably they didn't articulate it, you know, the way that you had presented it. Maybe they didn't um, understand it. Yeah. Maybe they don't understand it. I also think part of what's happening too is they don't meet all summer, so they come in on September and they have their form letter, and it needs to go out in October. So there's an operational flaw of timing that's going on as well, which was addressed at the October meeting. They talked about how geez, if we really want to make some changes to this letter, which they all agree that they should, we need to meet in the summer so we can start formulating that. Because part of what's going on is they're just, they're meeting in September and they're shooting something off. And it's not been given the time that it needs. Um, And what they've talked about is that they need to give it some more time and that they need to work together to change it. But it can't happen in one meeting for them. And it's volunteer-based, too. So they're in the time. Yes. I can see why it would really irritate you, but I... It's if you divide the problem into did they did it deliberately because they didn't like what you said, or was it they just had to get it done? And yeah. sure. Is there sure. an opportunity next year for more collaboration? Yes, yeah, so that's that what like they stepping on toes. No, no, and none of it's stepping on toes. It's just that you know historically this is what they've done, and this is what they perceived and worked for them. They bring in forty thousand dollars. They're nervous to change language. So that's that'll... that's a that's a merchant's myth. That is the greatest myth in <laughs> in in retail, right? In re, in that yeah. if I don't do exactly what I did last year, how am I going to hit last year's number? Right. It's it's the innovation is what drives productivity, 
And I get it. You got to hedge your bets. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, don't like you're, you're going to end up being the library that's all about, you know, books that nobody matters. I mean, Michael came in here and made a presentation last week to us about moving the needle, you know, in, in one, one aspect of the, of, of the brand. Like, we have to continue to innovate. And that's the problem is that is that I get it. I trust me. I want to protect last year's numbers. Right. And I just but at the same time, you got to tell a different story. In order to appeal to more people and, and tell it differently, so the you know the, it's, that's the other thing. It's like, what's next? You know, we we did the letter, which is exactly anniversary last year. Whether the language anybody you know has, you know, obviously I was closer to it than anybody else. I read it and I was like, what are they saying? Like the like, I arguably, if if I'd be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. the year before the letter that they've been anniversary year over year was actually better writing. It was actually better written. This is not good writing, and it's telling a message. It's telling a better message, but it's not telling it effectively. So, in the absence of, 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 you know, communicate in the absence of a strategy, do the communication that's better. Even if it's an off message, then at least at least it reads like a better letter. At least it's sentences that have cadence to it. This one that had zero. It was read. Go back and read the letter, guys. Like honestly. If, if you guys are like the whole thing, the whole reason why we're in this building is because we believe in it and we're passionate about it, but it lacks passion. It's not good writing. And this whole building arguably is about education and, and, and communication and community. And none of it comes through. It's bad writing. And I'm not saying that I'm, oh. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a strategist, not, not a storyteller, but I would argue that that just was not well executed. So what's the best way to go forward? Oh, I'm not going to get involved with it again. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just articulating yeah, my, yeah. my 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 dissension. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. So that it, because it's it, it. I mean, what I'm, um, what if you made a suggestion of what you think would be the perfect letter to I give to her? I already did. No, no, this no, already no. happened. That happened. This happened. This happened. Oh, okay. It happened at the September meeting when they had to get this letter out by I gotcha. October. And I think that there were some um, frustrations that things didn't move along as fast as we might like. Uh, but this is a volunteer group that yeah, okay. is, then, you know, very that's enough. focused that's enough. on, you know, making sure that they're hitting their mark every year and, and changes nerve-wracking and so we need to kind of it's not this like come in one month and and change everything that they've been doing that's not how this works you have to foster relationship you have to build trust and you have to start to create something different and they've acknowledged that they need to do that but you know it, 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 that's it's just not how the public sector works you can't walk in and tell a whole group that's been doing this for a long time that they're doing it wrong that they need to change their whole letter and, and, and that's it. I think it's great they took some pieces of what was given. I think they, they heard and they listened, but the timing did not work out and, and they, will, they will look at it. I don't think that their letter is purposely lacking passion and being, you know, um, disregarding what our goals are. I think they're trying very hard as a group to support the library. So, I think you're viewing this more of a slap in the face and a disregard to the library than it really is. I, I'm just, words matter. Words matter, mm -hmm. particularly in this building, I think. Words matter. And I think that that is, and I get people are um, volunteers and writing might not be there. Thing. I think we should move on. I don't think we're going to get anywhere. <laughs> Great. Great. And a substitute <laughs> chair, I get to do that. Um, <laughs> do you have any other business? <laughs> any other no. business that we should discuss? I, if yeah. people would indulge just for three minutes. Okay. How many of us here? Oh, hey Siri. That's how I know it's going to just trying to experience what you experienced. <laughs> I keep hearing from everybody that they're on a downer because of what the news is doing to them. No matter where you look, you hear horrible stories. And so I'm throwing out a question. What could we do as a library to have an impact here? Um, 
had a very brief interaction that was amazing. I'll, I'll try to summarize it. Uh, talked to a woman. She's uh, Jewish. She married a black man. Um, she's uh, very dedicated to the idea of protecting the Jewish state. She has a very close friend at MGH that works um, there and is a Palestinian and they're very close. And the, the Palestinian woman was reposting a bunch of articles um, and they were very uh, anti-Semitic in from the perspective of the Jewish woman. And so they, they went out and had coffee and they talked about it. And the, uh, after the conversation, the Palestinian woman started crying, stopped posting. And it was a wonderful example of people who belong to different tribes, but came together and talked about the issue and had a good resolution. And um, I just thought it was a, a wonderful story. Um, and there was understanding, a much greater understanding on both sides. The Jewish woman had a better understanding of why the Palestinian was upset and vice versa. So I don't know how we do it, but I just, I feel the need. Well, for the Duxbury Library just did a really neat, like, check out a person. I, th I think we've all talked about it at one point. And so they have, like, a, a whiteboard with magnets. And yeah. they just had, like, you know, um, oh, what was, like, one of them was, like, a different ethnicities or um, this person was a doctor, this person maybe was a gay individual, this person uh -huh. was, and so they had, and you just grabbed a person and you could go and chat with that, but like you checked out that card to go chat with them. And I thought that was, I don't think it was widely attended, uh -huh. but I think, you know, it's one of those things that you do a few times and people start to catch on and maybe feel more comfortable with it. Uh -huh. But I thought it was a great idea. Uh -huh. So did you chat with them at the library? So you? Yeah, it's like, so like, you know, um, Somebody who was gay sat at one table, and somebody who was, you know, you know, Mexican American sat at another table, and you just checked out and walked over that person if they were free, and sat down and had a conversation. So I thought it was interesting. It's called like check out a person. It's like speed dating. I was just it's like speed dating. It is. It is. So yeah, it was a nice program. That's Thank cool. you. I think you've been bringing that up for a while. That idea of like bringing people that are, you know, have different thoughts on like, big issues. Because this is a safe yeah. place. Yeah. 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 It's great. I'll keep bringing it up. <laughs> Please um, do. I like it. It's a good, it's a good thing. It just, yeah. I know we had something planned with the, the faith leaders and that seemed to have fell through, but we'll find an opportunity. Good. Yeah. Lunch with Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we'll talk more about um, agglomerationable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else before we end? Motion to adjourn. Motion, yeah. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Great. Yeah. See, what was that acronym for health?